Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unicorn Gaming Terrain. Guys, this is a painting video. I usually try and do these seven to ten days, but I've been so stuck with work and stuff. This, this has been like two weeks, I think, since I've done a painting video. If you're new to the channel, guys, these are nice, easy videos. I'm not the world's best painter. I don't try to pretend to be, but I try and... This is trying to get from a pile of shame. Um, so if you enjoy watching people paint or just, you know, enjoy listening on watching painting whilst you're doing your own painting this is for you all my regulars regulars here guys i feel love thank you very much today's model is a it's a priest or some description from looks like D &D, he's got a backpack on his back and all that sort of stuff um but i'm going to use him in my own game that i'm making so as a warrior priest or something like that so it's not so i missed a bit of yeah i missed a little tiny bit in there for the spray anyway so guys I'm going to see you in a second. Apologies for the last little second there of the, before the uh, intro. The camera didn't want to stop recording. <laughs> right, so let's go through that palette. We get that. Uh, uh, this is, where are we, Phrygian Fer Grey, um, Terminus Stone, or Terminata Stone, yeah, Terminata Stone, uh, White Sides White, Gothica Brown, um, Bain Blade Brown, Retribute Armour, Death Guard Green, and that's Bronze Flesh. Not, yeah, Bronze Flesh. I've got um, some silver floating around, some Chainmail Silver floating around. For the weapons and any bits of metal on there. I've got some Aposian Camo Shade for any sort of washing, and I've got some Rifle and Flesh Shade. This is the first time I'm going to use this, this, as you can see, it's not open. So it's the first time I'm going to use it on, on skin. Um, Yeah, let's crack on. If I do go off camera, guys, I do apologise. It's not my intention. Now when I'm doing the faces, basically what I'm doing with this bronze flesh is giving it a light dry brush just to pick out yeah as much as I can. One thing I love when you're painting a model, I mean, I, I can't do it, I can't see it here, but when I watch it on rec back on recording, see, you know, is everything okay and everything else, um, and the model's all just, you look at the camera and you see it on the film, it's all just black and you can't see nothing, it's undercoated and yeah, it's great. And as soon as you start adding some, some colour, you see the whole model just pop off. Absolutely fantastic. Now is that, no, it's not on glove, it's his hand. Of course, with dry brushing, for me, the, with the bronze flesh on, especially across his hand here, yeah, let's see this up, the, in between the fingers stays black from the undercoat, and the rest of it just goes across nicely, let's give him another little touch up on the face. Again, so if it goes in and out of focus, it's not my intention. Right, let's go with the let's go with the big stuff now. I'm going. I've got some. Actually, I think that, is that a chest plate on his stomach? Yeah, it is a chest plate. Well, it looks like a chest plate anyway. Okay, I'm going to go with some Death Guard Green for his robes. Because <laughs> so I think he's a uh, dirty robes where he's been travelling the road and everything else and. Just um, 
I can also then highlight up with some, you know, the other light colours I have. It's also different. I was going to go with um, like cream or white um, rose, and I thought, no, you know what? Let's go with something dirty and then start bringing it up lighter. Everyone goes with cream and white, and especially as his backpack on his back. It means to me that tells me that he's been he's out and about. He's not one of these priests that hangs around in the churches and the chapels and all that business. He's actually out doing doing the work. Wandering off camera again. You see that I always do that. I end up wandering off camera because I'm too focused on what I'm doing and enjoying painting the model. And <laughs> I do apologise, guys. Me. I'm notorious for this. I've just gone the, the other opposite way. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I need to set up a square where I can just I'll set the camera up so I can actually film from above. That's what I need to do. Just having the time, and when I do have the time, I'm not having anything else on my plate like terrain or anything else. <laughs> uh. Right, I'm going to just, just pop off for a minute and leave that to dry. I might go over a few bits here and there that are just a little bit hard to reach whilst I'm filming. I'll see you in a second, guys. Right, I do apologise, guys. Some of my pressing the stop button when recording is not working. Anyway, um, I painted silver, okay, on the chest. and just a, It looks like it's got little things around here. Little... Uh, not keys, but like little sigil things. I painted the silver on the weapon. I painted the attribute of gold on here. Got a little bit on his hand. But it's not a big issue. Um, 
Now I'm gonna I look, say, look at his back back. I've died today as well. There's a little a yellow, a bit of gold I put into the lantern there. One color I did forget to put on the palette was Rhinox Hide. So I've got that now. I'm gonna go for all of this stuff now, get this done. The leather work. Um, we've got a leather pouch here. So we've got all those leather pouches. I'm trying to get as much of the leather done, as much as backpack in leather as possible, because there's a lot on there. I didn't realize exactly how much detail we had on there and that's another thing I love when it comes to painting you start, you look at the model black and everything else and it's only when you start picking out certain things that you start seeing the details now if you use up or highlight the model then you'll see the details a lot quicker but for me I don't I don't it's not I don't know how to do it I just don't like up or highlighting um, for me, if I'm painting bigger models, like giants, dragons, all that sort of thing, then yes, I'll send up all highlight because it's such a big model. But if not, I don't like these little, doing it to these guys. I'm going to go with the um, Parisian Grey, I think it is. Let's get the ropes done. Because he's got a rope here. So this, this monk, this warrior priest, is set for business. None of this sitting in the church are a benediction to you. No, he's out on the battlefield, um, you know, in dungeons of raiding and looting and everything right now his ropes that's all the basic colouring done for me yeah so just a recap gold silver the leather is three bronze flesh is four Death card green is five and a bit greater. There. So six colours. And I've basically got not all, I need to do the need to do this bad boy. Um I'm gonna go with you. That's gold. I'm gonna go with some what's that, that brown. Gothica brown. And paint the top of the lantern. It's a nice dirty brown. Yeah, I'll just try to brush it down slightly down through the, the lines. Now, where I've dropped that bit of gold in there, it looks nice. It looks like it's just, yeah. Now, we're going to go with some. Should I, should, I, should I say it? Yeah, I had to. I wrote it like Death Guard Green. It's a terminus stone, and I'm going to water it right down. Start, start sort of washing it over the top. Not letting it pull in certain places. Terminus stone I'm using is actually an airbrush paint. Okay. I think it's an airbrush paint. Yeah, it is an airbrush paint. So it's watered down anyway. But by me watering it down even more, I'm turning it to a proper wash.
It's a mess where we're at now. So I made sure I got all the ropes first. I did. So I didn't get any sort of sleep puff. Yeah, I did. Right, so I'm going to let that dry for a minute because it's, it's really walked down here, which will take too long. I see anything, guys. Right, I did this quick, still leaves some dry brush on the gravel, testing out my new dry brush. This is actually a makeup brush. I think it's an eyeliner or something. So I don't know. I'm a bloke. I don't know these things. So now I'm going to test this out on the top here. It's still, um, sorry, screaming skull, screaming skull on here. Should be dry enough now. Let's give it a quick dry brush. I don't think it's dry enough. I think it's just picking up. Ah, oh, no, it's just messed it all up. Let's keep going. I think I've just messed this whole model up. Ah, I don't know. Let it dry and let's see what we can do touch up wise. I don't know, I think I just really cocked it up. I think that brush is too big, to be honest. I don't know. If it is too big, then I'll just have to get a smaller one next time. Leave it to dry and see what damage I've done to it. Right, so it's not quite dry yet, but almost there. Just in these little bits here. I don't know if I've got other light and see this focusing or not, but just in this little bit here, there's a little bit extra I can see. It's not actually turned out that bad. I was panicking too much there. So now I'm going to go right to the first shade and get into the face. Now, when I was dry brushing this, because his face is turned, slightly turned, and slightly, the hood is sort of covering half the face, it just means that that side that only got a little bit of a dry brush, so it's not illuminated that well, which is good. Let's get into all the little dips and crevices. I'm going to go flash it over this lever. Although, that actually looks like looking in this light, and it, it, it could be just me, but it's just to come below, and especially when it dries, you see it afterwards. When I paint the gold in the lantern here, it looks like it's getting letting off some light, but I don't know. Just We'll see if, how it dries. Let it rope a little wash down. I can't touch the ropes yet. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come back to it on the ropes. Almost done. Right. Don't know if that's dry yet, but I'm too impatient. <laughs> um, I'm going with a Fosin camo shade and I'm going on all the ropes. I'm going to wash them all down, darken them down a little bit more. So it's the original colour of. That I had it on. Pick out all those cracks and crevices as well in the sleeves. I thought I messed it up. I'm actually quite happy with what's, how it's looking so far, to be honest with you. I really thought I messed up the 
going over it with that the water down terminus and then dry brushing it and but I'm actually really pleased. I'm also going to use camera shade on the gold, darken that down a bit. A bit on the silver to darken that down. I do like uh, this is zooming in. Can you see the back back? How nice does that look? I guess I'm going to have to get some light on it. Does it look like it's the backpack's been actually been illuminated by the lantern? I'm not sure. It does to me, but I mean, I, I could be, I could just be fabricating my own head. Oh, yeah, it looks great. You try comment below, guys, and let me know. So I'm going to get this bad boy as well. I definitely have to give that five ten minutes to dry. I'll back to you in a second. Right, so <coughs> I'm gonna go for some white scars white. A tiny bit on the brush. And I'm going in for the eyes. As you can see the sleeve's still a little bit wet. But I'm gonna go for the eyes. Line up. Quite a bit, there wasn't enough paint on the brush. Let me mess it up now. That's probably the best I'm going to get them. This is not very great. So now I'm going to do a little bit of white that I have left and just dry brush just the top areas of the face the nose, the lips, the chin, bits of the forehead. Try and get as much of the face as possible. Yeah, the, to me, that's not the best face I've ever done, but. Actually, no, that's a vast improvement on the faces that I do because I, I can never do faces that well. Give his finger a little little touch of dry brush white. Now, with the white the white scars, it's like, again, it's a layer of paint so it goes on nice and bright and dulls itself down. A little bit on the back of the hand. Right, now I'm going to go for the last colour, which I've already used and put away. <laughs> Screaming Skull. Now I'm going to take a bit out. Let's get the model first. And I'm going to take this, my finger. I'm going to start to just, I say dry brush, it's not a, exactly a dry brush, it's sort of an edge highlight type of dry brush. So all the raised areas, I'm just giving a little once over. At the same time, this is sort of a wet blend because the wash is still a little, the shade is still a little bit wet. So I'm trying to knock in the camera.
So I may go for all the edges I can. Just to I know, just to lighten them up. I'm going to flip that back way. Just turn it around. Nice this time in the morning, especially in the background, all you can hear is the birds singing. It is nice and relaxing. Too relaxing, I ended up moving off camera. <laughs> I really need to get time to set that overhead camera up. The wife uses the camera as well for her, um, when she does her ghost hunts and stuff. I don't want to be trying to film and I've set up and she needs it and there's all the hoo-ha running around. I'm absolutely really pleased with this. This actually turned out really well. So considering I thought at one point I'd messed it up. I'm really happy with the, the way the shaping's come out and the way the arms are and everything else. Give that lever a little stiffening type here and there. See now I'm going a little bit more, a little bit more here and there because I can I can actually see what's dry, what's not dry, what's blended, what's not blended, what needs a little more of a touch up. So we'll put a little touch here and there. The bags a little touch up. face a little touch. I don't want to touch the face too much because I think that looks absolutely fantastic actually now. The eyes I'm a little bit disappointed with but I can't really see into the, you can't really pick out the eyes too much. I'm going to give this, this the bottom of this silver a little tiny dry brush, uh, yeah the silver a little tiny dry brush just to pick out those edges a little bit. I'm going to give these little mace a little, just a little touch on the top of the, the little knobbly bits on the mace, on the head. Just to, let's give this a little quick edge, edge highlight as well, just from this gold. This is the gold symbol wears in your hand. And 
voila we are finished so as always i'm going to give you some trick pictures don't panic because i'm not sure how the focusing was and if i kept straight off camera or not a few things before i show you some pretty pictures <coughs> the first thing this is the brush that you use to dry brush it okay this is an eyeshadow eyeshadow brush okay i got for euro 50 from from pennies primark if you you know if you live in england and now i use this one for doing the base it was okay wasn't i use this one for just a quick dry brush over now to, for me it worked but this was just too big the smaller side was too big and if I could get in the smaller size I might do um, the second thing is if you watch the last train build in the Necron buildings I actually run out of black spray um, I ran out to the range and looked to get some didn't have any in stock all they had was gloss and I was like no I don't want gloss not certainly not for undercoat models so I'm in a great position now so we can say, how, how's that great position? Because I've got heaps of models here that are undercoated. Some are half painted. I've got heaps of models elsewhere, you know, boxes of that are half painted. So until I get a chance to go to, you know, Dublin to Warhammer, um, all I've got now is models that are ready to be painted. So I'm not going to be distracted by doing other models. So my aim at the moment now is to get through these models that are already, already at that stage, then start moving other models to that stage. So I've got 20 Noga Warriors down here, Chaos Warriors with great weapons, I need to put the stand together. There's uh, 7 Chaos Knights, uh, especially in Dreadnought, half done, a, a mirage of heroes that need to be done, 3 jump packs that need to be done, some Terminators, all of these Necron pieces still, that I haven't done anything with, because not that I haven't had the time, I, I haven't really had the time, but I just... I was trying to hold on for the Imperium magazine, but there's also an update on the Imperium magazine for anyone that's waiting for it. They basically had an issue with collecting the money. That's not us not having the money in the bank. That's them, their system not being able to collect it for some reason. So everything's on delay. Now this is Sunday. Hopefully I can get this up before I go to work, but this is Sunday. I was told that if it's not here by Monday to get back onto them. So I'm hoping it's here tomorrow. But if not, you know, I can't help that. Let's get back onto them. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications. I will be showing you a close-up. I hope it's dry. So I'm going to be showing you a close-up. Just give me a second. Until next time, take it easy. Hope we can get another one up tomorrow, but we'll see. Take it easy, guys. And here we are, guys. Here's a close-up. Sorry, the lighting may not be great. Okay. I know some people are trying just it's more as close to any what you need to be. I just want to try and see pick out the detail. Let's see if I can get this guy up. That's what I'm talking about with the backpack. You see it? How nice that is. I like the the robes actually come out really well. A little bit of edge highlight on his little um Totally simple in his hand as well. It's just come off nice. His face, I think it's the best face I've ever done, apart from the eyes. I couldn't quite get them right. Best you can see. See, so yes, that's a bit, bit of a better view. I think the edge highlight on the little um, things underneath his belt buckle. I think that's fantastic. Okay. You know the camera's trying to focus on everything on all necro models trying behind. So up, focus on the model. Anyway guys. Um until next time, hit the buttons for me and I'll see you later.